Father, we worship you. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We glorify your holy name. We say that there is no other than you. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your sufficient grace. We thank you for your mercies that endure forevermore. We bless you for the listeners and the viewers, O God. Thank you for all those that you have entrusted to us. We thank you for everybody's life, O God. We thank you for your word and we pray king of glory that you come and challenge us that you come and change us that you transform us by your word give us the grace to understand I disappear so that you will appear God speak to your people minister unto them in Jesus name hallelujah, hallelujah. we want to thank you all those of you that are watching us via Facebook, Facebook via YouTube, YouTube and over every social media platform and those that are tuned in we bless the Lord for you before you I am Maggie Raymond and I am privileged to minister to you today and I'm being interpreted by my pastor Pastor Edward Taka Salongo Dabo Dabo Pastor Edward Taka Salongo Dabo Dabo Amen. Amen So today I want to share a simple word with us this, that wa this word that God has impressed upon my heart when you look at the world the things that are going on today uh, over the news we hear of people committing suicide in one way or the other uh, people are setting themselves on fire Many families are breaking off. Breaking. And this has not excused the born agains. But I want us to learn something today. And the word is called the sift. Let us first go into the scripture. Luke 22. Then said, it is now time for the sift. Still in confusion we looked. So he called out his bride from the behind of the examination hall. The bride. And then this bride when she came out. She had her garments all torn. And she was all bleeding. She was all covered with shame and scorn. Some, and some units had abused her. And he said... This gentleman that was supervising. And he said, Some of my units have not been faithful. They have defiled my bride, the church. And they have torn her garments and brought scorn and, uh, scorn and shame unto her. Then he called me out and said, Look up. I looked in his eyes and they were blazing fire. He asked me, do you know what this is? No, I answered. Then there was a strong radiance that came from his eyes that you could feel the impurities within you at that very moment. So he, he told me, this is now the purification. I have been, I have been purging and I have been pruning. But now is the time for the purification. And he said he is now to the cup of the affliction. Hallelujah. Mm. So he, he, when he brought out this cup, some of the ministers fled. 
They didn't want to take off the cup. And he brought out a sieve. He again put ministers into the sieve. Somewhere too fast too fat to go through the sieve. And others just held on to the sieve. They didn't want to go into the cup. When I looked at him, he was smiling and crying at the same time, weeping so bitterly. Within my heart, I asked myself, what is this? And he said, I'm crying because of those that have not made it through the sieve. And again, I'm happy for those who have made it through. So he took out cups. And he went on giving to other ministers. He said, this is the cup of affliction. Many have drunk of that cup and have failed and they have, been not, they have not been faithful. And others that have drunk of it and have been found faithful. Their lives have not, their lives have not, been, have not remained the same. And he said, everybody is going to take off this cup. Some have already taken of it. Others are in it. And others are just going to partake of it. So he said, this is the time of testing. It is the time of the sift. He said, I have done it before. And I, I am going to do it again. Once more. Because I am coming back very soon. Now, let me tell you the truth. When you look through the lives of many believers, many of them have been going through tough situations. Living alone, the lockdown and everything. Many have gone through situations they cannot describe. I have talked to a couple of believers <laughs> and they testify to the betrayals of the people that they thought were so good unto them. And I'm telling you the truth. God has come to a place where he wants us to take eyes from man and fix our eyes onto him so that the scripture will be fulfilled which says that fixing our eyes onto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith. So let us go back now. What does the word sift mean in this context? We are back to Luke 2231. Number one, it means to sieve. To sieve as in literally you get a sieve, you put things there and you begin shaking them in a sieve. And figuratively, as Jesus was talking to Peter, this is what he meant. An inward agitation. Um, Mm -hmm. mm. To try someone's faith to the edge of to the verge of overthrow. The church in this age it has been infiltrated and many ravenous wolves have, have crept in unawares. Many wolves have crept in unawares. So it has come to a place where Jesus wants to separate the flock from the goats. You will believe me 
There are many believers who assume to be following Christ. But they do not want to look to the cross. They don't want to carry the cross. The message of the cross has been thrown away. Many people want to, to sound politically right in this era where we are. There are so many things that people don't want to talk about. Because they fear to offend the people who hear the gospel. But let me make this statement. If I offend an unbeliever, that will bring them to righteousness. Because if I don't point to their sin, then they will not know that they are walking in sin. Because the God of this age has beguiled the people and they are walking in sin. We are living a generation where the Bible says they will take good for evil and evil for good. Woe unto us. So it has come to a point. Many believers, even in the church, they look to the cross, but they don't want to die on that cross. They don't want to kill the flesh. And they have a gospel, a certain kind of gospel that they, that they think is supporting them. But let me tell you of a truth. Jesus said, Whosoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up their own cross daily. So many are in church. They are following the gift. But their hearts are not right with God. Let me also make another statement. It is possible for a man of God to manifest and show power and work miracles. Many tremendous miracles unprecedented. And yet their hearts are not right with God. You know why? Because the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. They are without repentance. And many such people have gone astray. And these people, they are leading flocks and flocks. And they are leading them down their own path. And I thank God for the lockdown. Because the church was moving at a very terrific speed. And we were headed for a crash. Because many people were driving so fast down the lane and they didn't even recognize they were going off-road. And when Jesus realized that, he said, stop. Let the whole world pause. And now I, I want to get back to the people and teach them the precepts and the principles and give them a kingdom mindset. Child of God, I will testify that through this, this lockdown period, many things that I thought I knew and I found out that they were typically wrong because I focused on Jesus and nothing else because there were times when I hoped for things and I thought I had faith and I looked on two people <coughs> but they disappointed me and now I've gotten to a place where I know that if it not be for Jesus then nobody will save 
So that I will begin believing and walking in the scripture which says there is no other name that was given unto man for which salvation comes except the name of Jesus Christ. So now I've learned to follow Jesus. I've learned to focus on the cross and we, we, we must get to a position where we know God not by the man of God but God himself. Now every, now every church is empty. Every believer is at home. They depend on live streams. And there is no more uh, flipping people over the chairs. There is no more casting out of demons and you know doing all that stuff that is to say there is no more drama in the church. Why? It is you and the building. I remember a while ago we used to sit and now I would have been preaching to over hundreds of people. But now I'm here in the building with just this cameraman and the camera looking at me and my interpreter. And what does the scripture say of such times? The just shall live by faith. So now, by faith, I believe you're there watching me. Hallelujah. Amen. Church is so awesome these days. There, there is no more wars. No rumor, no, no rumor. No rumor mongering. No rumor mongering. I mean, where, where will you find me to backbite me? I don't answer. I'm locked up in my house with my Bible and my family. And this is where the church began. The church began in homes. But we had gotten to a place where we thought church was about the building and thousands and thousands of people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go to Mark 11. In this chapter, Jesus was hungry. And, and, and he wanted to eat. When he looked around, he saw a leafy fig tree. The Bible says this fig tree had a lot of leaves. We can say it looked so healthy. And, 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 and Jesus desired to eat of the fruit of this tree. But let me tell you the truth. When Jesus went to this tree, there was no fruit at all. Pray the Lord. So this tree, in as much as it had leaves it did not bear any fruit and that was the church we were, we were having a lot of leaves we had TVs we could catch people and show thousands of people falling down on their chairs but the gist of the matter was the fruit which we had neglected. And now Jesus has told us no more multitudes. I used to go on crusades every month and I thought I was ministering to many people but I had neglected my neighborhood. And that is what most of us believers were doing. We were strong ministers in church but when you go back home there was no testimony at all probably no, no, not even one knew that you were mlokole but now Jesus is trying our faith it is now time to check your salvation the Bible says work out your salvation with fear and trembling 
Luke 6.43 tells us that a good tree cannot bring a bad fruit. Neither can a bad tree bring good fruit. So for every tree shall be known by its fruits. Because of thorns people do not gather grapes. Not even of the bramble do people gather figs. Uh-huh. Uh, Amen. But now here, the fruit that manifests, they manifest the condition of your heart. You, ca- you cannot say you love when you don't have love in your heart. You cannot say you're patient when your heart is not patient. You know you can play the gimmicks and you can lie You can lie about but not for so long the tree you might, we shall manifest. Many believers had, had born bitter fruits and others were even bearing poisonous fruits. Because Isaiah 59 4 says, There is none that calls for justice. And nobody pleads for the truth. They trust in vanity and they speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Now listen to verse 5. They hatch cockatrice's eggs. Uh-huh. And, and weave spider's web. Uh-huh. And he that eats of their eggs dies. And that which is crushed breaks into a viper. Amen. And that's how we were. We had conceived such things that we had even begun killing people in church. The worst of wars was not against a believer and an unbeliever. The biggest war was apostle against apostle. Pastor against prophet. The, the pastor against his own flock. Uh, and you know when God looked at all this katemba. And he said let me pause this world for a bit. And he says in Isaiah 48.9. For my name's sake I will, I will defer my anger. And for praise I will refrain for thee. Aha, no retendo in Jacobanga, Nerekerayo, Nerekerayo, that I cut thee not off. And he says in verse 10, Behold, I have refined thee, but not as silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction for mine own sake. Even for mine own sake, he repeats it. I will do it. For how should how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory to another. Now, we cannot skip to say, let me, let me just be blunt at this. Men of God has taken, have, had taken God's position. And they had taken the glory which belonged to God and they had vested it upon themselves. And just like the Bible says, I will strike the shepherd and the flock will scatter. And this is why we have come. Let me tell you the truth. After this lockdown, many ministries will not resurrect. And many, many, many assumed servants of God will be nowhere to be seen. And even some of the things we had believed, you will find that they would have changed. 
Nebi mu kubye twali twakereze ebimu mujja kwesanga nga byachuka because they are men of god kubanga lwa basajja bakatu who had told their flock abali bagambye bisibo bya if you ever leave this church and go to another you will die ndiko maluva mwino kanise yange no genda mundala uja kufwa but now they are at home and they are not dying kakati daba kuluno bali wakawa abu ya ndeba for they are from one youtube channel onto another and they are not dying service bala bala bazanja wulo ku masimu gabwe atete banafa so men of god can no longer manipulate the flock like they did kakati mungeri endala abasajja bakatu and many of the lies that had been for, that had been told to this flock through this lockdown people have gotten to know the truth let me tell you this every heart will be tested whoever professes to be a follower of Christ their faith will surely be tested because when the sift comes it does not try your righteousness it does not try anything else but your faith is I can give you of, of a few instances. Shadrach, Misach, and Abednego. When they were going to be thrown into the furnace of fire, they told King Nebuchadnezzar, even if you throw us in the fire, we know our God will save us. And even if he doesn't save us, we shall not bow down to your image. And this is the kind of faith that God is looking for in the church today. That we shall stand and say, it doesn't matter what we face today. Our faith shall not be shaken. God is looking, with a, God is looking for a believer with unwavering faith. Child of God, we are going to be tried back and forth, uh -huh. front and center. But we shall hold fast unto this rock of our salvation. And we shall say that the Lord is my stronghold. Praise the name of the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. This one thing always remember. Stay on the cross. Pay more attention to the things of the spirit. And keep the faith always burning. Because by so doing, Paul says, Paul agamba, hope does not disappoint. When you keep your faith in Jesus, when you feel your faith is wavering, call upon the name of Jesus. For the Bible says, and it shall come to pass, and whomsoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. There is no trial that has come upon you that is beyond your control. And there is no trial that is new to man. Whatsoever is has been before. So this I pray for you child of God. That the Lord shall strengthen your faith. That he shall help you that you stand on the rock that even when your faith is tried that in the midst of the tempest and trials in the midst of the storm in the midst of the furnace of affliction even when you are partaking of that cup of affliction that you will say like Job said that I know my redeemer lives 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 your faith comes from what you know of God he has done it before he saved you before and he will save you even this time you are not going to die in that affliction do not succumb to the schemes of the enemy do not give yourself up to the devices of the enemy. Because the Lord God goes before you like a mighty devouring fire. Remember that greater is he that is in you than the devil that is in the world. Your faith will stand. Your faith will stand. Your faith will stand. Faith will stand. For it does not become from anything else but from God himself. And this is the confidence we have in God. That whatsoever we ask for in his name, he shall give it unto us. He shall stand and fight for us. He fought before, even this time he will fight. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much.
Uh, if you want to give your tithes and offerings, because we still need those finances, please send your tithe and offering to these numbers. The number is MTN. It is 0782 27. Biri msamvu. One zero. M zero. One seven. M msamvu. I repeat. Kanku diri m. M T N. M T N. Zero seven eight two. Zero msamvu. Manana biri. Two seven. Biri msamvu. One zero. M zero. One seven. M msamvu. And Airtel. Aya Airtel. Zero seven five seven. Eri zero msamvu. Tano msamvu. Nine eight eight. Mwenda manana manana. One nine two. M mwenda. Biri. Zero seven five seven. Eri not Musamvu Tano Musamvu. Nine eight eight. Mwenda Munana Munana. One nine two. E mu mwenda biri. Till we meet again. See you next week. May the Lord keep you and bless you and make his face shine on you. Shalom.